A long time ago, in the 60s and 70s, you could travel from London to Krakow in Poland and not have to change trains, almost. Imagine catching a train in London and getting off that train in Krakow. This direct journey was almost possible in the 60s and 70s. I travelled like this to visit my family many times. The journey to Krakow took approximately 24 hours. I said this journey was almost possible because, of course, there was no channel tunnel. You still had to cross the sea to continental Europe by passenger ferry. To make the journey today, from London St Pancras International to Krakow involves three train changes. Your trip today would last at least 24 hours. Arguably, your journey would be far more comfortable in today's modern trains. Your itinerary would involve catching a direct Eurostar from London St Pancras International to Amsterdam Central. There, you would change to a direct train to Berlin Hauptbahnhof. Hauptbahnhof means central station in German. At Berlin Hauptbahnhof, you would change to a direct train to Krakow. This is how it worked had you booked a train ticket through the Fregatta Travel Tourist Agency in London. You booked one ticket with a seat reservation covering the entire journey to Krakow. At Liverpool Street Railway Station in London, early in the morning, you would be met by a Fregatta rep who would accompany you all the way to Krakow. You deposited your luggage on your departure platform and railway staff loaded it onto the train. Your train would depart for Harwich Parkiston Quay Railway Station in Essex and you would be seated in a dedicated Fregatta chartered railway carriage. Upon arrival in Harwich, railway staff ensured your luggage was transferred to your ferry. After a six hour sea crossing, you would arrive at Hook of Holland Harbour. Upon arrival at Hook of Holland Harbour railway station in the Netherlands, your luggage was unloaded by railway staff and waiting for you on your departure platform. It was up to you to load your luggage onto your chartered carriage of your Poland bound train. The Fregata rep would direct you to your chartered railway carriage where you would remain in somewhat cramped conditions, accompanied by your luggage for the rest of the journey. Once settled in your railway carriage, you could enjoy the scenery on the direct journey to Krakow. All this was long ago, and I cannot remember the exact train route. However, I do remember that the train passed through Hengelo in the Netherlands and Bautzen in what was then East Germany. Hengelo I remember well, as at the time the town was twinned with Mitcham in the county of Surrey, just south of London, where I used to live. East Germany was memorable because in the evening our chartered carriage was decoupled from the train and shunted onto sidings, where we remained for approximately six hours. This event was always the signal for the four passengers in each train compartment to retire for the night. The four couchettes were pulled down and readied for sleep. That is, if you could sleep through the clatter of trains on the nearby railway tracks. I never got a wink of sleep during this stopover. At some stage at dawn, there was a clonk signalling that a shunting engine had engaged with our carriage. Shortly afterwards, the carriage would be shunted and coupled to a locomotive, often a steam engine, which pulled a new set of carriages bound for Poland. During the short stop at Bautzen railway station, I observed that the platform station name signage was in German and Sorbian. This dual language signage is still the situation today, at least on the facade of the main station building, as can be seen in a relatively recent photograph. This shows the station name signage of Bahnhof Balzen in German and Dvornisch Sobudischen in Upper Sorbian. My apologies to Upper Sorbian speakers for my pronunciation. The Balzen region in Saxony in Germany has an ethnic Sorbian minority. The Sorbs are a Slavic people 
numbering approximately 60,000 people in the area. Bautzen is quite close to the Polish border. If I remember correctly, the journey time to the border took approximately one hour. Officialdom through the Netherlands and West Germany was marked only by one visit per country by Dutch and West German passport controllers. This situation changed markedly once the train crossed into East Germany. I would say the controls in East Germany verged on intentional harassment, as passport controllers visited multiple times to check passports, announcing themselves gruffly as Passkontrolle. Once the train crossed into Poland, there was one check by Polish passport control and customs. If you are unlucky, the customs official would ask you to open your luggage and possibly question you about the contents. Arrival in Krakow was always memorable, as I knew a family welcoming committee would be waiting to whisk me home for, by then, much needed rest and food. Having caught up with family news, and been well fed and watered, it would be time to retire. After the thrill of the railway journey and renewed time with family, dreams were sweet and full of anticipation of coming adventures with family. It has been decades since I experienced these journeys and I may have forgotten some points. If you notice any errors in this video or you can offer me new related information, I will be grateful. This video is based on one of my blog posts on the South Coast View website. I'll leave a link to the article below. You'll find a lot of articles about tramways and railways on South Coast View, and I'll leave a link below to those articles also. I would love to hear your comments. If you like this video, please do like it and consider subscribing to the channel.